Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, Section 2.5, Transformations of Functions. In the previous video, we summarized how to in invoke a vertical stretch or shrink on the graph of a function by multiplying a number in front of the function. If the number was bigger than 1, it invoked a stretch. If the number was less than 1, it invoked a shrink. For horizontal stretching and shrinking, it's kind of the same thing However, remember when we did translations, when we did stuff outside the function, it did, did what we thought, plus moved up, minus moved down. But when we did stuff inside the function directly to the x, it did the opposite of what we expected. Plus moved it to the left, minus moved it to the right. We had the same kind of dichotomy here. When we multiply outside the function, it does what we expect. Big number, stretch. Small number, shrink. But here it's the reverse. If g of x equals f of c of x, in other words, is if you multiply a number directly on the x, and we'll illustrate it in a moment, then the graph of g is obtained by horizontally stretching the graph by a certain factor if the c is less than 1. Well, how can it stretch if the multiplier is less than 1? And it invokes a horizontal shrinking if the multiplier is greater than 1. But here's the catch. It does not stretch or shrink by a factor of C. It stretches or shrinks by a factor of the reciprocal of C. It's kind of a balancing act, which I won't go into details. So this one's a little trickier. You just have to remember that for horizontal, it's the reverse. Small number stretch, big number shrink. And the stretching or shrinking factor is the reciprocal. For example, let's say we have f of x equals the absolute value of one third x. Okay? Let's sketch the graph of the absolute value using a few reference points. In retrospect, when I first introduced the eight graphs, I should have listed specific reference points because they're good for keeping up with transformations. So for the graph of absolute value of x, the reference points that we'll keep track of are 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. Now we could choose more points like 2, 2 or negative 2, 2, but I think keeping track of these and knowing that the shape is a V will help us. So, what transformation would be invoked by multiplying the X by 1 third? Since 0 is less than 1 third is less than 1, in other words, the multiplier on the X is between 0 and 1, this will stretch by a factor, this will stretch horizontally, that's important, by a factor of not one-third, but the reciprocal of one-third. Now, writing 1 over 1 third is unnecessary. If you know what it means to reciprocate a fraction, you turn it upside down. But honestly, something like 1 over 1 third shouldn't disturb you. If you view the giant fraction as a division problem, 1 divided by 1 third, and then remember the rule for dividing a fraction is to keep the first number, change it to multiplication, flip the second number, 1 times 3 over 1 is 3. So instead of saying 1 over 1 third, we'll just say by a factor of 3. Now, what does it mean to stretch horizontally by a factor of 3? That means we're pulling everything this direction three times as far as it used to go, which means you multiply each x-coordinate by 3. So, if I multiply the x-coordinate on the first point, 1, 1, by 3, it puts it over here at 3, 1. For the origin, multiplying its x-coordinate by 3 keeps it there. And for negative 1, 1, multiplying its x-coordinate by 3, 
makes it negative 3 comma 1. So we get this much wider V shape because it got stretched horizontally three times as far as it used to be. Now those of you who are really trying to uh, push the envelope might look at this and say, but, but isn't this also a vertical shrinking? And the answer is yes. Guess what it's shrinking by? One third. But don't let that bother you. If you multiply on the x, it does the opposite of what you expect. Stretches for small multipliers, shrinks for large multipliers. The boundary between the, which, between the two is one. But the factor is the reciprocal because that makes sense. If the number is less than one and we want to stretch, we would stretch it by something bigger than one. Reciprocating a number less than one gives you a number bigger than one. And vice versa. If we're shrinking, we want to multiply it by a number less than one. Reciprocating a number greater than one will give you a number less than one. So I'll summarize that over here between videos. And then in the final video in this series, we'll put it all together. And it's not nearly as bad as it seems.